you've heard the warning. The world as we know it has come to an end. Uncertain supplies and rising demand have made cheap oil a thing of the past. Sure, that means higher prices at the gas pump, but that's not the only impact. Not by a long shot. You may not realize it, but the first secret of oil is simple. It's everywhere. We can talk about asphalt to aspirin, cosmetics to computers, helmets to heart valves, safety glass to shower curtains, umbrellas to Ziploc bags, and everything in between. Oil lubricates our machines, our weapons, and even our skin. It binds the building materials in our roads and homes. And it provides the chemical building blocks for plastics, rubber, and synthetic fibers. Just look around. 30% of your television is made from petroleum-based materials. At least 50% of your sneakers. Your exercise attire, nearly 100% oil derived. And also the laundry detergent used to clean it. Contact lenses, check. Your toothbrush, ditto. But wait, did he really say aspirin is made from oil? Aspirin and, and many other pharmaceuticals are petroleum-based products. Cancer-fighting drugs. I think it's an unknown fact that the petrochemical industry provides the basic building blocks. A little more than a century ago, none of this was true. Back then, rubber came from trees. Plastics were all but unknown. And our biggest mode of transportation required moving tons of coal. But then rose the combustion engine. Our mobility soared, and oil has been king ever since. Our whole society has really matured around the concept of this fantastic material available at a very low cost that could be delivered to our doors. And the last 100 years, 50 years, has been just figuring out new ways to take advantage of that great raw material, natural gas, crude oil, just making so many magical things uh, happen. A single barrel of crude equals 42 gallons. And Americans consume about 20 million of them every day. Roughly 50% of every barrel goes to finished gasoline, while another 15% to diesel. Remarkably, it's that remaining 35% that's become the backbone of our world. So what is it about petroleum that makes it so versatile, and for now, so vital? Inside each barrel is a rich mix of hydrogen and carbon molecules, formed in all sorts of combinations known as hydrocarbons. Some, like C1, better known as methane, are relatively simple hydrocarbons and are considered light. Automotive fuels contain slightly longer chains, while others, such as the chemical structure of motor oil, contain heavy, complex chains of 50 or more carbon atoms. Separate these different molecules within the crude, and you generate potent energy sources like gasoline and diesel. Yet within what remains is a rich assortment of chemical building blocks known as feedstocks. It all depends on refining. What a refinery basically does is take the crude oil, rearrange molecules through various processes, some to make gasoline, some to make diesel, some to make jet fuel, but a lot to, to make the basic building blocks for many industries worldwide to use as finished products. Valero Oil is the largest oil refiner in North America. Here at their Wilmington, California refinery, they process more than 135,000 barrels daily, which arrive via tanker ship and are pumped ashore. This is a line that we receive crude off of the crude ships. The crude is brought in through this line. It's a 30-inch line. It goes into the tanks that you see behind us. Uh, we have four crude tanks, approximately 300,000 barrels each. Think of any refinery as a giant chemistry set performing four basic tasks. Distillation, hydrocleaning, fracking, and blending. Each stage is designed to create more exact and more pure feedstocks. Stage one is distillation, which separates the primary hydrocarbons from one another. Crude distillation is the first step in the refining process. This is where we take the raw crude oil that comes in from the crude tanks 
and we begin our initial separation. A furnace connected to this tower begins to boil the oil to upwards of 700 degrees Fahrenheit. As the heat intensifies, different hydrocarbon molecules within the crude begin to vaporize at different temperatures. Now separated, these vapors rise within the tower, cool, condense, and are then drawn off at specific levels. The lightest hydrocarbons, like the liquid gases used to make aspirin, rise to the top, while the heavier ones used in motor oils and road materials remain toward the bottom. The result? The once singular crude has been separated into a variety of fractions. What we get in crude fractionation is these products that you see here. So starting with the lightest product, we have natural gas, which has to be stored under pressure, stored in this container. We have a light gasoline product, a heavier gasoline product called naphtha. We have jet fuel range and diesel range products. We have gas oil range products. And we have uh, residuals like asphalt, or in this case, this is a sample of coke. None of the fractions that come off the distillation tower are finished products, and all will require further processing. After more than a million years underground, most need a good cleaning to rid them of contaminants, especially sulfur. In this process, we bring the oil in and mix it with hydrogen. We pass it through the heat exchangers behind me and the heater to my left, and we heat the oil up to about 700 degrees. At that point, we pass it over a catalyst and that catalyst, along with the hydrogen, removes contaminants in the oil before we send it on for further processing. The result? A clean, contaminant-free product, like this jet fuel. In fact, most airports maintain direct pipelines to local refineries. And as for all that removed sulfur, it's collected and sold as a key ingredient in agricultural fertilizers, in rubber tire manufacture, in fire extinguishers, and even in explosives. But not every fraction is ready yet. And some even need an atomic makeover. Cracking shatters larger complex hydrocarbon molecules into simpler, more useful ones which are then made into finished products. This can be done either directly with intense heat or in combination with chemical catalysts. You can see this is the sort of catalyst we use. It uh, almost moves like a liquid. Uh, what we do is we mix this catalyst at very high temperature with the gas oil, uh, over 1300 degrees, and it reacts to form these lighter products that you see here. Cracking heavy gas oils into smaller hydrocarbon molecules creates this base oil used to power ships. In addition, the cracking makes propylene, captured in this canister. Propylene is a feedstock used in makeup, toothpaste, antifreeze, paints, and polyurethane products, including football helmets. Go. No new oil refinery has been built in the United States since 1974. Only through new efficiencies have refiners been able to keep up with ever-rising demand. We don't throw anything away. The barrel of crude is much too valuable a resource not to try to use everything we can out of it. And we try to use 100% of that barrel. 